Hey guys, Mike here. So I like to tinker with things. I like to build things. I especially like tinkering with electronics and stuff like that. But I'm a ham radio operator and one of the things I like to do is go out to random places, set up an antenna and talk on the radio. Now if you don't know anything about ham radio, it's like CB but a thousand times better. I'll tell you more about that in a later video. Right now I want to show you what I'm working on because it's like a potato gun. Uh, but it's going to be so I can launch a beanbag thing up in the air a lot further and a lot higher than what I can throw That will allow me to get my antenna up there as high as possible. So check this out All right, so what I have here is a one inch ball valve um, I'd like to have found a uh, like a, a butterfly valve, but I couldn't this is what Home Depot had So that's what I went with uh, and all the supplies and everything I got at Home Depot. So this is a one inch ball valve connected to two brass nipples. Um, from the brass nipples, I went from a uh, one inch to one and a half inch up. This is a one, hat, one and a half inch diameter coupler right here. And this is all glued together. And I did end up using some uh, tape on the, uh, the brass fittings. I don't know if that's necessary, but just as a precaution, I ended up doing it. So. Uh, this is pretty much the center of the gun right here. Uh, on the other side, I have a two inch, one and a half, or two foot, one and a half inch pipe that's going to fit into one side, and a two foot, one and a half inch pipe that's going to be on the other side. Now, this is going to be the air chamber here, and on the end of it is just a regular cap. And then I drilled a hole and I put a threaded um, valve stem for a tire on it. So I'm going to be able to use a bicycle tire to pump this thing up, uh, pressurize it with about 125, 100 PSI, depending on how high I want uh, that beanbag to go. Now I will tell you, if you decide to do something like this, you're going to have to get Schedule 40 PVC. This is rated for 330 PSI. Uh, I'm only going to be putting half of that in it, uh, 150 max probably. So uh, this should be good to go. So let me finish getting it put together and uh, I'll show you the rest of it. So we have the air can in here and we've had plenty of time to let the glue dry and cure. Uh, this is going to be the air chamber here and I haven't really had a chance to test it out too much um, yet. So we're going to go do that. But before we do that, there's a couple other things I want to go over real quick. Now when we go to charge this thing up, there's a couple different ways we can do it. It has that tire valve on the end of it. Uh, you could plug that into a regular bicycle pump, and a lot of people use bicycle pumps and hand pump it up like that. Uh, if you had a, a DC powered tire inflator for your vehicle, you could use something like that. If you had an air compressor at home, you could use something like that. Uh, the option that I'm going with is to use CO2 cartridges um, that you can use to inflate uh, tires. Uh, there's going to be an adapter that we're going to put on the cartridge here and uh, these will be put together and then this will go on the valve to inflate it now the problem with this is there is a mathematical equation that will tell me uh, the amount of air on this tire and the size of the chamber and how much psi it's going to get me to um, i don't know that mathematical equation and i'm not smart enough to figure it out so uh, the problem is whenever i put this on the valve i have no idea what it's going to inflate that uh, pressurize that chamber to. I don't know if it's going to be 130 psi, 80 psi, or 220 psi. So when we go to uh, pressurize this thing for the first time using the, uh, the CO2 cartridges, of course we're going to take all the safety precautions, uh, safety glasses, gloves, the whole nine yards. So um, that's how we're going to charge the thing. So once we get it pressurized, the other question becomes, what are we going to shoot? Now, it's not a potato cannon, although a potato ca cannon or a potato gun would be a very similar in style. Uh, I got my inspiration from people who do tree work, and I actually designed this thing to shoot a rope over a tree limb so that I can pull up a wire antenna so I can use it for ham radio. Um, and going back to the people who do tree work, um, they use a thing called a throw bar. And it is going to be a little beanbag type uh, throw bag like this. Uh, it has something inside of it. And it is going to sit down here inside of the tube. Actually, they load it like this with the rope down. So whenever it comes up, uh, it pulls the rope up with them. So it's going to go inside the tube like this. And uh, that is going to be the projectile that will be coming out 
Uh, and like I said, people shoot these things and they can go easily 65, 75, 85, 100 feet up in the air. So we're gonna do the uh, same thing uh, and that's what we're gonna try. All right, so to test this out, we came out to a big old park. Um, we have the, uh, the CO2 cartridge and the little uh, head that goes into the straighter valve. First of all, we're gonna have to pressurize this tank, so we'll start with that. Now this CO2 cartridge is going to get really cold once you uh, start pressurizing the tank. And like I said, I have no idea what this is going to pressurize to. You're going to want to make sure the tank is closed. So on this particular valve, once you get it loaded, you push into it. And the CO2 cartridge is going to get super cold whenever you release it. So I believe that's going to be it. Now we're going to take this off. We're going to test that PSI because I'm really curious to find out what it pressurized the tank to. Alright, so I have this tire gauge. I actually had to get another one because mine only went up to like 60 PSI. So this goes up to 160 PSI. And I'm really curious how much this 16 gram CO2 cartridge pressurized this tank about 110 psi so i'm very very happy with that all right so we have 150 feet of string here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to lay it out here because i don't want it to get caught on any twigs or anything like that whenever uh it goes so we're just going to lay it out here kind of up on top of itself you don't want any resistance on the string. All right, finally, we have the throw ball here. We're gonna load it into the tube. You wanna load it roped down so that whenever it comes out, the rope is trailing on it. So you're gonna load it rope down like this. And if you have something to tap it down with, if you have something, or you can just tap it down like that and you want it to go all the way down until it hits the bottom of it. All right, so once you have the rope loaded up, you don't have any resistance on the rope, we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing. So the idea is it fires up, goes up over a limb, and at that point you can use this rope to pull up a heavier rope or a wire or something like that. So we're gonna aim out there, make sure it's clear, make sure no one's out there, and then we're gonna fire. That went a lot higher than I thought, man. Did it? That was pretty sweet. All right, so that was pretty impressive. It went pretty high. We're gonna walk over there and see where it landed, but uh, that wasn't too bad at all. So the 16 gram cartridge right here charged the uh, air chamber up to about 110 PSI. With that 110 PSI, uh, whenever I shot this, it deployed about 120 feet worth of rope. Um, that's not how high it went, but that's how far it went and how much rope it drug out, which is pretty impressive. Uh, all in all, I like it. I like the design. It was very simple to do. Um, you can get these online and um, get them to the point where you can be 50 cents a charge. So uh, charge it up and you're set. Uh, there are a few changes I'm going to probably make to it. So whenever I get back to the house, uh, I'll show you what my thoughts are and uh, what I may do to change this to try to improve on this design just a little bit. Alright, so let's talk about the modifications I'm going to make to this thing. And there aren't very many because it's pretty nifty. Uh, it does what I need it to do. Uh, but uh, I've seen people put uh, handles on these, um, red dot sights on these, and uh, some other things. Uh, so I'm thinking about the red dot sight. Um, it would come in handy to kind of aim where you're looking at. Uh, you know, I fire a lot from uh, where you saw me fire down here by my hip. Uh, but people also fire these things like they would fire a, a bazooka. I've seen people fire them like they're firing a rifle. Um, so a red dot sight on this thing to know kind of uh, which part of the tree you're aiming for would be very helpful. The other thing is um, the straighter valve here at the end. Uh, I'm going to take it out of the end. I'm going to cut this right here and uh, bring this out to a, a 90 degree and have it sticking out the side here. 
Uh, this will allow me whenever I go to tap it down and get that throw ball to fall. Uh, whenever I tap it down, I won't be pounding this into uh, dirt or concrete or anything like that. Um, I won't have to worry about sitting on the barrel all the time whenever I lean it up against something. Uh, I'll be able to use either end. So that's going to come out the side. Um, it will take this down a couple inches, which I'm fine. Uh, it'll probably load it up with a little bit more PSI because it'll be a more compact space. And then eventually, maybe, uh, there's a butterfly valve. And people replace these valves with a, a butterfly valve instead of the ball valve. Uh, the butterfly valve um, has a little bit less uh, torque and pull on it uh, whenever you release it. Uh, but this works well for me. I mean, it does everything I need it to do, and I already have it. So I'm fine with that. Uh, I thought about painting it, coloring it, um, putting a coat of uh, finish on it of some sort instead of just leaving it uh, the PVC. So we'll see if I decide to do that. All right, finally, if you guys enjoyed watching me build this thing, uh, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on the materials or how I put this thing together, make sure you leave them in the comments below. I will try to get back with you and uh, answer any questions that you may have. Uh, it was definitely an interesting adventure, and I'm very happy with it. If you do decide to build something like that, make sure you guys are safe about it. And uh, I will see you guys on my next adventure. So... Back to the tree, people. Uh, this is what we're going to use. This is a 14 ounce weaver uh, throw ball. Uh, basically, it has little bean bag, sand, mar uh, sa something in it. So, when we do this for the first time, of course, we're going to take all the safety precautions. We're going to have the safety glasses, gloves, uh, all the personal protection stuff that you need. So, if it does decide to blow up, I don't get too injured, hopefully. Um, <laughs> so when we so when we decide to do this of course we're going to take all the safety precautions that we need uh, safety glasses gloves everything we need safety glasses gloves yeah so when we do this of course we're going to take all the safety so when we charge this thing up for the first time using the uh, the co2 cartridge of course we're going to take all the safety precautions uh, safety glasses gloves uh, the whole nine yards there so um, hopefully whenever it charges. I have no idea how to work this thing. Oh, there it goes. I guess you have to press into it. 